today's talk. Yes. Thank you, chairpersons and dear friends. After a lot of discussion about insulin resistance, beta cell failure, which comes first, which is important, obesity, and post tissue, I have been talking something different. That the lean type 2 diabetes mellitus, is it a separate entity? Dr. Siddharth is sitting here in front of me. Most of the papers are from Qatar and he is able at known for this activity also. So, in the next 10 to 13 minutes, I will go through the literature to see what the evidences are, whether it is a separate entity or not. We look for the pharmacodynamics of insulin of glucose metabolism in the lean subsets of type 2 diabetes patients. Their hormonal profile and response, beta cell autoimmune status. Do we have some clinical peculiarities while when they present to the clinician? What are the future areas of growth? And then we will summarize. So there is no debate that there is a linear correlation between obesity, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes. It has been proved again and again in various technological studies that as the population starts gaining weight, the abnormal curve goes on, the incidence of diabetes also increases. And obesity is present in about 70 to 80 percent of diabetic patients in the Western population. And both syndromes, the metabolic syndrome and the diabetes are characterized by insulin resistance. Now if you see this chart, of WHO, you will see that the population of America, Latin America, Middle East and Europe, they have BMI more than 25, almost more than 50 percent of the population has BMI more than 25, that means they are overweight. But if you see to the Asian countries and specifically for the India, it is much below 10. Even we are having a rise of diabetes mellitus in an exponential form in India, the obesity is not to that extent as in the western population. So, if we are getting a new cases of diabetes because of lifestyle disorder or whatever, they are not that obese as, concerned to, as compared to the western population. Then what are the other things which leads to this? And if you are going to have diabetes from this population in which more than, uh, less than 90% uh, population is under 25 BMI, Definitely or most of the patients will have a lean body mass. And you can see that as with the years, the weight of gain is there in the population. There is a direct rise in diabetes mellitus incidence. And as the weight increases, the risk for diabetes also increases. This is an unproven fact. And this was again shown in the HNES study in 1999 to 2002. From USA, that around 15% of people with diabetes were not overweight, whereas approximately 55% were obese. And this was again reiterated in diabetes and informatics study. So, is it similar with the Indian population? As I've already promised, that our Indian population, BMI <coughs> above 25, is less than 10%. So, it is not same with the Indian population. We have much more lean type 2 diabetes or patients. So the pattern profile of diabetes are different in India and in certain developing countries. Non-obese type 2 diabetes mellitus, 80% in the western world and in a study done by ICMR, sponsored by Dr. S. Das from Qatar, it was only 25%. So this is the vast difference between the western and the Indian data. That is why we are interested in what is the characteristics of a lean diabetic patient in Indian setup. Whom do we label as lean? In this study, whatever data I have collected, the built and diameters of Indian diabetes patients are far from being overweight and they are often lean or low body weight. That means more than 20% below the ideal body weight for the height and gender. And this was the data from nine centers all over India compiled. You can see that lean population was 26 and normal weight 65. Obese were only 7.8 from Qatar, 25.4 from Hyderabad. So most of the patients are lean. Does this cause some abnormality or some specific peculiarities in the glucose handling by the lean patients and of the insulin handling by the lean patients in the hepatic blood? To answer this, the studies have been done. 
and it was shown that the hepatic carbohydrate metabolism in type 2 diabetes mellitus lean have moderately severe to severe basal hypoglycemia. We know that hepatic glucose output contributes to the basal hypoglycemia and these lean type 2 diabetes mellitus patients when they present they have a very high HbA1c level and a high basal hypoglycemia. And the hepatic enzymes concerned with carbohydrate cycles operate differently and at higher levels in the lean type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. To answer this, the glucokinase activity was estimated in the serum. You know that glucokinase is the first step of carbohydrate metabolism from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and this is an irreversible step in the hepatocytes. And this works best when the blood sugar is around about 100 and above. So the fasting glucokinase level is always lower in a healthy individual. So this glucokinase level was estimated at different centers and it was seen that the glucokinase activity is much higher in a lean type of diabetes mellitus patient as compared to normal weight or obese. So this is a very specific peculiar feature of glucose handling in the lean type of diabetes mellitus patient. Another thing is that glucose uptake by the hepatocytes is not insulin dependent. But the glucose metabolism further is dependent on insulin. Because insulin causes expression of certain genes which act by improving the glucokinase and pyruvate kinase enzymes which helps in metabolizing the glucose in the hepatocytes. So to answer that whether there is some difference in the insulin extraction uptake by the hepatocytes or not, the study was done by using our antipyrin and lidocaine. These are the two drugs which are one is given IV lidocaine and antipyrin is given orally and they go through the first pass metabolism and they share the same metabolic pathway which insulin shares. So if we can assess the metabolism of these two drugs, we can drive an inference that what would be the fate of insulin. And it was seen that the antipyrin high five was much lower in lean tapu diabetes mellitus patients. While that of MEGX, which is a metabolite of lidocaine, was not, not that so. So this was also a very peculiar finding which was seen and this the outcome was that antipyrin alcohol was markedly low in the lean type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. There was a positive correlation between serum ALT and antipyrin in obese, but not so that in type 2 diabetes mellitus lean. And the lidocaine study showed that metabolite production was dependent on gross functional state of the hepatocytes in the obese type 2 diabetes mellitus patients, while it was independent in the lean type 2 diabetes. So the hyperactive metabolic state observed in the liver of these diabetics with lean habitus is probably an inherent characteristic which is responsible for excess utilization of insulin during this first pass. This differentiates the lean type 2 diabetes from obese. Because in obese, there is insulin resistance in the hepatocytes and the hepatocytes are not able to extract the insulin during the first pass. While in lean type, this is very rapidly extracted. Now, what about the hepatic microsomal enzyme activity? It was seen that increased first pass utilization of insulin by hepatocytes in lean, low serum insulin as compared to obese because most of the insulin is extracted during the first pass, so the serum insulin levels are low in the lean, while it is high, that is hyperinsulinemia in obese type of diabetes mellitus. This differentiates these two categories. And the high peptide C levels in lean also suggest a good beta cell result. Because see peptides, they come to the separation, but the insulin is extracted by the hepatocytes. So if you see in the serum, the insulin level is low, but serum C peptide level is good after giving some glucose challenge or stimulation of the beta cells. So the insulin kinetics during the first pass and hepatic handling of carbohydrate metabolisms are probably the two most important de denominators that can explain these peculiar characteristics of type 2 diabetes mellitus lean. So what about the hormonal profile and response? As I have already promised that there is increased hepatic extraction, so the circulating levels of insulin have been found to be lower in the lean type 2 diabetes mellitus as compared to the obese. And lower levels of insulin in lean patients always follow many investigators to designate them as type 1 diabetes mellitus or malnutrition irritated diabetes mellitus. So how to differentiate whether this lean patient is really a subset of type 2 diabetes mellitus? or is a late onset of type 1 or a man nutrition related diabetes mellitus. The distinguishing features are that in type 2 diabetes mellitus lean, the insulin glucose index is high. 
while amardium it is low and the levels of growth hormone is high in amardium and that goes further high if you give a glucose challenge but not that so it tap tap the matters lead. So again the study was done in, by uh, for the plasma levels of insulin in lean ovies and amardium and it was after giving some glucose challenge or post glucagon challenge and it was seen that the plasma level of ovies in glucose rose much higher followed by that of lean and least in the MRDA. So this was also a difference from MRDA. And the estimation of plasma C peptide showed that in lean and obese diabetes, they are at baser and post estimated state are almost same. That means they have good capacity of beta cell reserve, they respond to the therapy, the C peptide levels goes up, but because of increased hepatic extraction of insulin, the serum level of insulin is lower as compared to obese type 2 diabetes. Now, now to differentiate this leads to patients from autoimmune injury or type 1 diabetes mellitus late onset. Estimates have been done and it was seen that IDS antibody is always absent in type 2 diabetes mellitus lead. This is a very important hallmark of these patients. While in type 2 diabetes mellitus with normal body weight and obesity, there is a varying degree of ICF positiveness from 7.5 to 13.3. All type 2 diabetes mellitus are not ICA negative. It is only the lean patients, they are negative. GAD antibodies are present in type 1 diabetes mellitus, but they are also present in type 2, and they are also present in type 2 diabetes mellitus lean. So it is only the absence of ICA which makes them a distribution characteristics of these lean patients. So the difference in incidence of autoimmune markers between type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2 diabetes mellitus suggests that lean type 2 diabetes mellitus is the genuine variant of type 2 diabetes mellitus and not a late onset legacy of autoimmune beta cell destruction type 1. What are the peculiarities in the clinical profile? It is that in obese type 2 diabetes mellitus, the macroangiopathy is more important. Macrovascular disease is the major cause for morbidity and mortality, hypertension, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease. While in non obese it is the microangiopathy and in lean, infection and peripheral neuropathy. These two are the most important hallmarks of lean type 2 diabetes mellitus. And you can see in this study done by Gus Das that is the peripheral neuropathy which dominates all the presentations. And in a study done at Manipur, it was seen out of 100 patients that neuropathy was seen in 70% of the patients followed by retinopathy and nephropathy, while CVA and CAD only 1 and 2 percent. So in lean type 2 diabetes mellitus, cerebral vascular accident or the macrovascular disease complications are very less. It is the nephro, uh, neuropathy and infection followed by retinopathy and nephropathy which dominates. It has been seen that these lean type 2 diabetes mellitus patients have increased hepatic lipase activity. Their basic Total cholesterol is on the higher side, primary side is high, but SDL is never low. It is always on the normal or a bit on the higher side. Probably that confers them some protection from the macrovascular disease. So regarding the treatment, lifestyle intervention always remains the hallmark basic background therapy for every type of diabetes. And they respond well to supply urea, TGDs, metformin, alpha glucosidase generators, glenites and insulin therapy. Almost 70 to 80 percent of the patients respond to oral therapy for a pretty long period of time, only 10, 20 to 30 percent they go into secondary failure. So, what are the areas of future interest? Number one is that how to define lean, because in all these studies they have taken the BMI. But we know that apart from BMI, the waste ratio, the ethnicity, the age, so many, there are so many factors which contribute. So maybe we have to, for further study, we have to have a, a better definition for defining the person as a lean. So we are running out of time. Okay. This is a very famous slide. You all have seen that having the same BMI, the body fat is different. Waist circumference is different. Criteria for different ethnicity. For the newer class of drug, for all these studies, they have been done on surprenized areas, but none of this study has been done on GLP-1, on DPP-4 or the newer drugs which are coming on. So these are the areas of future interest. What is the state of GLP-1 hormones in these patients? Maybe for uh, area for the future study. 
So to summarize, it is definitely a different, different entity than type 2 diabetes obese. They have got a different pharmacodynamics for insulin handling, for carbohydrate metabolism, they have a different clinical profile and they, don't, they are autoimmune and negative and they respond well to oral hypoglycemic agents. Thank you very much.